Welcome, everybody. Hello. Thanks to those of you who joined us for the premiere of the Clear Creek Distillery Spotlight video. We hope that you enjoyed that um, because we we enjoyed it. I very much enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I enjoyed meeting the whole crew. I enjoyed mm -hmm. going to Hood River. It was fun. I can't say that I did any of the editing, but it was fun <laughs> to watch the editing in, in progress. Well, it, <laughs> it was a ton of work. We had a lot more footage than we expected. Part of the reason is because we were so welcomed there. We expected an hour or two of their right. time. They literally gave us an entire day. Yeah. Um, so we have to thank um, Joe and Caitlin so much. And we're going to bring them on in just a minute. Um, but uh, once again, just wanted to say thank you to all of you who joined us, who have had your patience with us over this last month. Obviously, it's been quite difficult but um, we are, we're feeling a little more like we're ready ourselves. to ourselves. Yeah. A little more like ourselves. Yeah. Um, there are some different types of videos coming out in the near future. Not just, you know, some are distillery profiles. Some are um, fives and Fridays, fives and Fridays. Yeah. some are travelogue style, just some different stuff. Um, it's going to be uh, quite different than a lot of the other stuff you see on whiskey tube. Oh. That's, hopefully yeah. that's uh, that's by design um that's the stuff that we're passionate about that we're loving right now so that's where we're at and now we are going to bring in joe and caitlin and um thank you so much to all of you let's get that organized like that how's that that's a little better hi guys hey everybody hi thanks so much good to see you again it's good to see you guys yeah um, I'm going to get the banner going here just in case folks don't know. Um, we were going to do just a couple ounce samples right. of a couple of products um, as a giveaway today. And then we talked to the rep for Hood River Distillers and Clear Creek Distillery, and they donated a bottle of Trails and Apple Brandy finished bourbon, a brand new product. Literally Killer. just hit the market here in Oregon. Yeah. We just saw it Friday for the very first time. So, uh, super exciting stuff. We're thrilled to be able to give that away. So, uh, that's, that's what's happening tonight. Um, but we want to know, uh, if, you know, and feel free, everybody jump in here with your questions for Caitlin, with your questions for Joe. Um, and we can talk about anything, right? We can talk about distillery stuff. We can talk about hood river. We can talk about fruit orchards, right? And anything goes, yeah, yeah, you can. We can talk about anything that um, we have association with. Caitlin, you've been a distiller for almost thirteen years. Well, almost technically, almost twelve years in June. But oh, as soon as we get past June twenty first, we start counting on thirteen. Yeah, uh, I was pretty close. I'm counting. If you if you squint, it's thirteen years. Does it really matter after ten? It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, it's ten. Ten was a long time ago, and it's it's hard to. Um, <laughs> It's hard to remember what 10 years in the industry was like. Well, because you're on 18 now, right? Yeah, 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 I'm on 18. Yeah. And so you've been, well, that's, the, we actually didn't talk about this at all. Joe and Caitlin, is all of your experience with Clear Creek or have you been in other places over time? So for me, yes, but Joseph's had a much cooler career. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's cooler. There's no place cooler than Clear Creek. Um, I worked at Clear Creek and then I, I left to consult on and, and start a, a fair number of the first distilleries in New York City. And, and then I came back to um, move Clear Creek from Portland to Hood River. And, and I've stuck around ever since. And and uh, I do a lot of work with Big Gin up in Seattle as well. So while I'm kind of running around all over the place, I, I have to say Caitlin is, is holding down the fort and is doing the her and Garrett are doing the real work. You guys heard entirely too much of me on that video and not enough of her. <laughs> I really, well, I, I do love Joseph's come up with a really great, I mean, because, you know, we, we were really busy and we joke about how tired we are <laughs> to each other, uh, even though there's only three of us. But he came up with a, a really good metaphor for how it works and that, you know, we're, we're dressed up like one of those horse costumes. And Joseph's the head and he's just like blazing the trail in front of us and going out and meeting people and talking to people. And then I'm at the back keeping us moving forward. And then we decided that Garrett's the tummy because Garrett is really important for both of us because he reminds us why we do what we do and why we love what we love and why we're passionate about all of these spirits and the industry in general. And so between the three of us, we keep moving forward at quite the breakneck pace. 
Well, it, and for our, our Patreons, um, yeah, we didn't, we did, we really got a lot of Joe, not as much Caitlin, not as certainly not as much Garrett. Uh, but for our Patreons, we do have a extended cut of the tasting that we did um, because a lot of the tasting, most of the footage did. Well, obviously, none of the footage made it into this video. Um, We're just having too too good of a time. Too I good think. of a time, yeah. <laughs> um, but there will be uh, like a. 40 minute extended cut of that tasting that we do release for, for our Patreon so that they can see some of the products, you know, find out some of the tasting notes behind it, see if that sounds good to them. Um, so that'll be coming out soon. Uh, but we have a couple of questions here. Um, in the meantime, just going to shout out Eric Gunderson. Thank you so Thanks, much. Eric. Um, and, and we got a, it's a head to head here. We got Bill giving him a penny more than Eric. So <laughs> well done guys. Um, uh, but a quick, this is a good question here from uh, William Gil Gilkey. He says, how does the weather there age or affect your product differently, say, than Kentucky? That's uh, a good question. Any thoughts on that? Uh, Caitlin, why don't you start and I'll, I'll follow up if, uh, if there's anything I feel that needs to be added. So um, it's only slightly different. So Kentucky is definitely uh, warmer and, and drier, but not really, I think, as much as we think it is, considering how the barrels act now that we're on this side of the mountain. Um, the way barrel aging works, uh, your angel share that evaporates is based on the vapor pressure in the air. So when you're in a really cold, moist place like Portland or Scotland, um, there's already plenty of water in the air, and the air says, give me some of that ethanol. And so it favorably... Uh, pulls ethanol out of the casks and so your proof will actually drop in those climates. On this side of the mountains here in Hood River or in Kentucky where it's warmer and drier, the air is just starving for water. It's absolutely thirsty and so it says, I don't care about your ethanol, give me some of that water. And so your proof actually starts to rise in the cask. Um, and so we are seeing uh, about a, a single proof drop over three or four years in Portland and now here on the drier side of the mountain we're seeing a three or four proof climb uh, over that same period of time. So not so much that we're worried about adjusting what our barrel proof is, um, not so much that we think it's going to affect. I don't think that there's going to be a, a Portland taste versus a Hood River taste, but that's generally how the angel share and proof in cask works depending on the climate. That's awesome. Joe, anything yeah. to add to that? Uh, the only thing I was going to really add is that I, I, I was – I was uh, last night watching a, a Joe Bob Briggs sp special, and he was talking about the history of um, why, one of the things that he liked about the Kentucky distilling scene is, is that these master distillers could walk through and they could pick a single barrel and they'd say, that has to be turned a quarter notch to the left because it's got this microclimate of humidity that's right above this other barrel that's a yard away. And, and I just want to immediately go out and just dispel that myth that it doesn't work that way at all. If you have these giant rick houses, those little microclimates really come into effect. But you really just don't see that that much of a difference from a couple of feet away, especially when the greater variable is going to be on the wood itself and how that wood reacts to uh, where that tree was grown, whether it was on the south side of a mountain or the north side of a mountain whether it had fire damage, whether it had a cold winter. And so those are the really big factors that we look into when we're working with wood is we're actually more concerned with the barrel and the wood itself, making sure that's properly kilned and you can have a greater effect on the quality of the whiskey at the end. If you actually focus on the cask and the cooperage that you're using, rather than it being like, I don't know, five feet off the ground as opposed to two. That's excellent. Excellent. Um, quick thanks here to Sugar Kitty in memory of Norman thanks. for his, uh, thank you very much for that. Um, and also to Ruby Heart 921 She wants some boozy applesauce. Uh, she means Trails End Apple Brandy Finished Bourbon. <laughs> Speaking of boozy applesauce, that's what we're drinking right now. We is are drinking, yes. This bottle right here. We've been drinking it throughout uh, the video and, and now in the live stream here. This is a, a this is a Caitlin classic as we understand it. The sure. old delicious <laughs> yeah. double bourbon barreled uh apple brandy. Um and that here this is what we know about this. You may have learned this in the video if you were following along. Um this uh the trails and whiskey shows up in these barrels and then the apple brandy goes into it when they're empty. Um and twice that happens and that creates this double barreled 
Yeah, uh, apple two brandy. subsequent casks. So the same the same liquid sees two different bourbon casks before it's bottled. Absolutely, very flavorful, very caramel caramel apple tastic. We're enjoying this so much. Caramel apple tastic. That's great. I love that. Yes, it's delicious. for the long. For the I want that time, to be a fun dip flavor. Do you remember fun dip? <laughs> that needs to be a fun yeah. dip flavor. For the longest time, we were trying to push the slogan uh, for, for a double bourbon apple brandy to be DBAB, which we wanted to stand for okay. short for don't be a baby. But because we thought that was the greatest slogan that was never used in that <laughs> product, but no one ever picked up on it. Well, also, the barrels were initially stored in the very back corner of the barrel room when we moved in. And so we started calling we, we started calling it Don't Be a Baby. And then we started calling it Jennifer Gray because nobody puts baby in the corner. So ah, nice. the barrel book, the three ring binder that actually keeps track of all the barrel movements has a picture of Jennifer Gray. And it's just labeled <laughs> Jennifer Gray. It doesn't you if you would have any idea what's actually in the folder if you looked in the cupboard, except for you just have to be in on the joke. That's Fantastic. amazing. Thank you very much, Wendell Wilson. You are entered. Uh, good question here from Russ D. Any plans for any East Coast distribution? Not sure what regions you're in now. And I suppose it's by brand, right? We know we've seen some of your stuff out there. Yeah, it's by state. Some distributors so don't carry everything that we have. They pick and choose. We've got a pretty big portfolio. When it comes to East Coast, we do have a pretty good representation in New York City and in New York State. Um, I'm from Massachusetts originally. I'd love to see more of my product there. Uh, but that's something that we're kind of working on now. The uh, DC is another one that we've had distribution in here and there, but we're starting to broaden and get further afield. So um, uh, starting in New York, if that goes well, you're going to see a bigger distribution of all of our products, including single barrel, barrel selections and things like that within New York City and hopefully into the rest of the Northeast soon. But if there's something that you're specifically looking for, uh, it's easy to get in touch with Caitlin and I. Just contact the Clear Creek Instagram account for Caitlin and the McCarthy's Instagram account for me, and we can help find whatever you need. Or the Trails End account uh, for either one of us, depending on who's got the time that week. So there you go. That's um, and can confirm the uh, those uh, single barrel selections are, are quite good. We'll, we'll showcase one of those very shortly. Um, Sorry, we're we're a little distracted today. We're we're our bathroom renovation is ongoing. Yeah, if you and, didn't uh, notice, there's the, no whiskey behind us. The just a party house, picture. The house is torn up, and, uh, <laughs> and somebody was just on the porch. I don't know what that was about, but yeah. uh, um, anyway, uh, well, now I'm all distracted. Let's get back to it. Let's take another question. <laughs> Here's a good one from Bill Backer. Only familiar with floor malting a la Lafrag. Lafrag. Well, oh, more of these words yeah. that I can't pronounce. Do you use that malting approach or are there <laughs> others not referring to the peat smoke topic? Good question. Uh, well, the, the, the best way to say it is yes. Yes, we do, because we do get our barley peat malted in Scotland. It's coming from Port Ellen as far as the region. And uh, the way you know that is kind of the parts per million that it's uh, coming out with the phenol content, which is at 40 parts per million. So the same floor malting technique that Lafroy uses is uh what's supplying the barley for us excellent um well we've got, so we've been drinking the apple brandy but yep. i think it's time to move on to another product here let's do it let's do it do you, you know wanna, me i like to mix and match should we move into the the bourbon world now do a little trails in 10 i would love to okay because we gotta end on the mccarthy's i think we have to yeah uh so Next up, what we're drinking here, everybody, is... You all, I was going to say, we know it, we love it. It was our Oregon, uh, Oregon of the Year. Bourbon of the Year 2021. Yeah. It is Trails and 10, 10 years aged, 105 proof. And so this one, uh, which you, you heard in the video, uh, Joe talked about a little bit, um, finished in Oregon oak casks and the actual cask, not just with staves or something like that. Huge flavors in this bottle. If you haven't had it, um, it recently won our 10 year whiskey challenge. Oh, yeah. that we did, we did a four bottle that. blind. Just, yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, we, we did that. We recorded that video weeks before we ever went to hood river. Yeah. So, um, this bottle just keeps surprising us, keeps blowing us away. We love this bottle. I know. I wish, I wish it was available for everyone because yeah. I want everyone to try it. <laughs> we so do too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that bottle has been fantastic. And, and so, with the apple finish just showing up recently here local, 
locally, it sounds, you know, in that video, we obviously got a lot of information about what's coming next for that brand. Do you have anything else in the hopper right now? You mentioned maybe Multnomah Whiskey Library getting a cognac finished version. What what else is going on with that brand? I mean, it, I, I'm going to let Joseph tell secrets. I don't have to let him get started you're... telling secrets because then I'll have a good barometer for what secrets are on the table and which ones are still under yeah. the table. Uh, are we? Sorry, I was distracted by something that's happening on my computer. Are we referring to the Trails End or the McCarthy's? Trails End at the moment. That, okay, that's what I thought. And I just got I got confused about the, the <laughs> Monoma Whiskey Library thing. Um, yes, yes, we actually have two um, already done trials of two things that I think are really phenomenal. Um, one more so than the other. The first is that we're still working on trying to find a way to do a great Oregon wine finish. And I think it needs a little bit more work. I think it's good. It's a little too dry for my taste in terms of, in terms of what we want. So we're going to be reaching out. I already uh, been contacting a couple of, um, well, no, I'm going to keep that as a secret. I've been kind of, I'm looking for some specific wines right now that I've been reaching out to try to get as a for barrels see, for those. See why I had him set the bar because yeah, I didn't yeah. even know that he was doing any reaching out. So I, I, I wind up I wind up yeah. One of the things that one of the things that happens when you're the front of the horse is you get really bogged down in weird new product development stuff, which is headachey, and you you wind up putting in so many pokers in the fire that you just don't tell any about it anyone about it because like you don't want to make promises. Because everything sounds exciting when you're at that, when you're trying to just dream, right? Um, yeah. But the thing that we really like, and I think that this is hands down going to be the best expression of Trails End, which is a McCarthy's finish, which is an American single malt finish of the Trails End bourbon is, I mean, it's it's the next hill that we're going to climb on this. And I have to somehow do the mind grain inspiring task of figuring out how to scale it up at some sort of responsible way that it can be. Um, I don't I doubt well, it'll the, ever get as broad as is going to be um, in order to scale it up past a, a barrel or two every now and again. There has to be empty McCarthy's barrels to put yes. bourbon into and sure. Uh, empty, empty McCarthy's barrels are hard to come by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we, we wind up really using all the barrels we can. We're, we're coming up with a, we're starting to get a few more Oregon oak barrels lately. So I think we're going to have a little bit of wiggle room for it, but I have to figure out a, or there has to be a way that we can make this a little bit more, um, volume centered. That's going to be the next thing we're going to be focusing on with this. And yeah, because usually we uh, we pull a batch of McCarthy's and then immediately put the next batch yeah. in those barrels and keep on trucking. So there's that's there's usually not a lot a lot of vacancies in that department. <laughs> but I I, I was yeah, really but... serious about the soy sauce idea. Like I I thought that that scene sounded so great and so weird. And I I know that my my boss is probably just scratching his head as to how odd that is but i think it'd be fantastic and i'd like to see what i happens. mean uh oh shoot i'm gonna forget their name and i'm a horrible monster for forgetting who's the um uh the, the brandy place in portland that's not new deal stone barn stone barn stone barn okay so stone barn made a top ramen whiskey like we could have a soy sauce whiskey it's fine <laughs> yeah no, I, I think there's what's great about the Trails End line is is what I was saying in the video is, you know, and, and to whomever kind of thanked us for transparency, I, I really appreciate that. I don't like lying in, in what we do. It's a super creative field. You don't have to claim that you are making everything all the time, but you don't want to lie about the stuff that you're not making. And since we're not making the liquid, and we're just focusing on the finish. I say, let's really explore where that can go and use every inch of our creative effort to just focus on that one variable. And uh, I think there's great things we could be doing with it because it's, I don't know about for you, Caitlin, but it's kind of like tested and, and redefined a little bit of my blending and, and tasting skills that we, as we go through, through this. I mean, I'm, I love any kind of R and D like I, I'm, I mean, now that I know, I I should probably have been paying attention to most of what you're saying, but now that I know that you're putting like pokers in the fire for this wine finish, I've been mostly just sitting here being like, oh, who would I call? You know, I think I'd like to try this kind of cask. I think maybe this kind of cask. And so I've been like essentially cooking up batches of trails in, in my yeah. head and, and, and my mind totally wandered away because I'm a human monster. But yeah, <laughs> R&D is the best. R&D is, I mean, tour, tours, tours. 
getting to meet people like you both uh, when you came and like the those are, are like top tier days, but any day or any hour where like you get plunked in the middle of the sandbox and told to solve a problem, like that's a good day. Well, and speaking of R and D, and I don't know how much I'm supposed to say here, but when that the schnapps little guy that uh, the, the, beer, the beer schnapps, huh? that was... I mean, that wasn't even like a legit thing. I mean, it is legit, but you know, in the works, and I still think about how delicious that is. Yeah. Yeah, she brings, it up, she brings it up a lot. I'm like, I'm, I have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back this. We're gonna make this happen. <laughs> hey, you know what? As long as you bring it up and we don't, uh, yeah. we can talk about it all day long. Yeah, I have nothing to do with the beer schnapps. That yeah. is Caitlin's child, and it is amazing. So I, it, I, I'm just here to support this one. I, I want to see it live and thrive. Yeah. Well, I'll say where Trails End comes. I mean, you've set the bar pretty high already. So I am excited to yeah. see what can come up because it's already in my opinion, just fantastic. Yeah. You Agreed. just wait for that McCarthy's finish. That that American oh. single wall finish is really mm-hmm. just something yeah. special. I'm I'm personally crazy excited for that one. Mm-hmm. Me too. I, I think that'll be like the perfect uh, <laughs> mix. So yeah. I, I mentioned to you guys that I'm not the 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 a fan of super peaty things. That's just not where I but I feel like this is gonna be like the perfect balance for me. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Ernie as a cat. Norman was a true trailblazer, will be remembered, and we appreciate that. And you're in. Um, There's one more in here. Eric, count me in. Can you tell us where in the Midwest you have product? Good question. Is there a a site or something that can be visited? So um, I know that we have a distributor in Nebraska, although we don't, we aren't in very many stores, but if you send us a note on the Instagram, we can help you get a store closest to you. Um, We do have some distribution in Indiana as well as Illinois. Um, We used to have, or we still have some in um, uh, Missouri. We used to have some in Louisiana and I think we still do. Um, We do, we still have Louisiana. Definitely in Texas. But it's real harem scarum. It's kind of all. It's, it's kind of little bits all over the place. There's Wisconsin and Minnesota. I think those technically count, even though they're they're on the north side. Um, so yeah, it, it, the the best thing is to um, is to follow us on Instagram. Send us a DM. Be like, this is where I live. Where's the closest that I can get your products? Because, I mean, Clear Creek alone has like seventeen or twenty different SKUs. Um, and then you add in the four or five different SKUs for the trail's end. And then that's before you even start talking about um, HRD stuff like Sinfire that we don't even handle or process. And so but depending on the distributor, if they have all the companies, including Big Gin, you're talking about they're choosing from a portfolio of upwards of like 90 different SKUs. So when you're a distributor and you're trying to choose what you're going to pull on, they're generally not going to pull everything on. So if you're in... Illinois and you absolutely have to have our cherry brandy or you absolutely have to have McCarthy's and they don't actually have McCarthy's, we can work with the distributor to say like, hey, can you bring this in as a special order, uh, preferably into one of these stores that you're already sending product anyways. And so we no promises, but we can do what we can to get some of these um, products a little bit closer to your door. And that's your Instagram handle is it's Clear Creek Distillery. Is that right? Yeah. So at Clear Creek Distillery or at McCarthy's Whiskey to get either of us. Um, and so we can start working on on what you need. And there's a Trails End too that we pop in on. So the at Trails End um, Instagram as well. And if you want to see our faces a little bit more, those are usually the places to, to find them. We, I think, uh, are starting to just get um, all of our giddy energy out on our Instagram portfolio so it's it's I, I spend more time on the mccarthy's one than i do on my own by any means oh and i do yeah. want to say uh real quick about uh caitlin brought up sinfire i'm wearing a sinfire shirt i just want to say that this this is in honor of a great a great brewer that i know who made this product in particular uh his name was mike bowler he was a dear friend of ours and we lost him last year just one of the best guys in the world so uh this industry is filled with people who work really hard in every different level whether it's the most prestigious or the most value minded and everybody's amount of sweat equity is equal so um you know if you're ever out there and you want to try something spicy as heck and you don't mind a flavored whiskey just know that sinfire was made by a guy named mike bowler who's one of the most quality human beings you would have ever met so yeah it's the people behind the products. That's that's honestly that's the reason that we're we're starting this series of of distillery spotlights, 
And uh, it's, it's those types of stories, those types of people that we're your, your type of people that we're trying to profile here. And so uh, thank you for bringing us into that and for sharing uh, your story. Um, I will say, uh, I think Bill said it earlier, he commented on the nice color yes. of this Trails N10. Yeah. And I have to say, we didn't do a cheers at the top of the hour. My goodness. We, I don't even think we said who we were. <laughs> we're, so, we're so out of practice. Uh, but cheers, guys. Let us know what you guys are drinking because we're always curious. And we are getting some new stuff in our local stores lately that we're like, ooh, people, anytime we have a live stream, people are drinking stuff that we can't get here. And we're getting slowly but surely getting, uh, hey, then, getting the then things. Again, then again, there is some oddball stuff that we get here in bunches that yeah. other folks don't see out there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, let us know. What are you guys drinking on tonight? We'd love Thanks. to know. Um, we've got we've got other stuff to drink tonight. Should we move on from this trail uh -huh. zone? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's so good. Um, I know. Usually, I mean, we are trying to just keep this uh, happy hour, happy hour esque versus like sometimes we get out of control and are on here for two and a half hours. It's been happy. But yeah, so all happy. Here, here. But we can, I know, yes, I know you're worried sure. that the people won't know us. So here, let me do this real quick. Oh, I mean, we've been gone for a month. Look at there. Hey. Uh -huh. Technology. Look at me go. Yeah. I, I'd like to say that I did that. <laughs> it was your idea. <laughs> um, fantastic. Trails yes. End, of course. We love it. Um, what do we got here? Everybody's, everybody's sipping on stuff. We got... Uh, Wendy with a barrel seagrass. Um, nice. There's been uh, Matt drinking an Old Elk Armagnac finish in a Bourbon Van Glen. That makes it taste better. That's ten percent, ten percent flavor. We know that. <laughs> Reed Leslie with a Trails End Eight. Hey, there we go. There you go. We love that. The, Reed says it's a go-to, and for for forty dollars or less when you find it on sale here in Oregon. Yeah, absolutely. Steel. Eight eight year whiskey for forty bucks. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Wild Turkey Kentucky Spirit for Bill Joins. Oh. And McCarthy's six year. Look there for Eric Gunderson. Taconic Rye for Sugar Kitty. Uh, here's a question from Peach Coke. Big Gin, will you ever do another release of Big Gin in a McCarthy's barrel? Oh, Again, yeah. You get, I mean, we'd love to, but like McCarthy's barrels are hard to come by. Empty McCarthy's <laughs> barrels are hard to come by. <laughs> There's, we may but... or may not have a barrel that had Big Gin in it that may or may not have McCarthy's in it right now. So that barrel may or may not go back up to big gin for another big ginning. So we'll see. So it, there's it, one, there's one barrel in the wings. So but. you may or may not have just gotten a bourbon van exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say you can still get the, uh, the big gin McCar the McCarthy's finish uh, at the big gin tasting room in Seattle. Um, I, I'm sure there's, if you, or, or possibly even at the Hood River Distillers Tasting Room. I'm not sure if I saw it there last time, but that that's that one's still available if you if you poke around hard enough. Nice. I'll have to keep our eyes open for that one. We never we never oh, see it. Saw well, any of that. And we're heading up to see it. We will be there. Yeah. Seven days. Well, uh, you have to make sure now. that um, you get a hold of Alex Myers. We'll put, we'll put you in touch with Alex Myers in case you want to go to Captive Spirits and see what he's doing up there. I would not be opposed to that. <laughs> Uh, what do we got? Who else? Who else is drinking? We got Red Tick Beer, Traverse City North Coast Rye. Um, that sounds good for Canadian Chris. Welcome, Canadian Chris. Starlight Malt Whiskey. I wouldn't expect anything else from Bill. Bill Becker. Starlight Malt Whiskey, which is malted barley and malted corn. That's Wendell a really Wilson. good choice, Bill. I, I like that whiskey. A lot. <laughs> there you go. Wendell Wilson with some Highway Reserve Route Two. Uh, LCS Junior. Elijah Craig Straight Rye. Troy Tool is here. Welcome, Troy and Lisa. Sipping Russell's Reserve Single Barrel, and uh, there you go. Oh no, we said it was, has become a unicorn. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's tough out there. It is tough. Well, yeah. it seems like wild turkey is getting harder to find. At least some products in some places. Yeah. Um, My dad would absolutely lose his mind to hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> every it seems like every time we talk about wild turkey, any particular product, somebody goes, "I can't find it anymore." Um, and there's been some that have been hard to find here, at least in the last year, but all of a sudden yeah. it seems like everything is here locally again. So that's one of those things. We're lucky to have that stuff in Oregon. Yeah, for sure. ECBP A122. That's, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a hitter right there. In the spirit of super malt drinking, 
I think it means single malt. Drinking Chattanooga whiskey, single barrel, 117.8 proof. I like super malt. Oh, yeah, sure. And What's of up? course, the, the Bourbon Van 2022. Glad look at you. Look at Eric. You're, I know you're enjoying that. Love it. It's flexing. Keith J. <laughs> Keith J is drinking water because he had too much bourbon on Saturday night. It's Monday. That's a two day hangover, Keith. That well, is... that happens when you're over. Well, I don't know how old you are, but <laughs> you hit like 30 something. Now it's like a four day. It's like four day hangovers for us. <laughs> I get, yeah, I wake up lamenting my evening and then you know. sleep at all. Yeah. Peach Coke has Westland Peat Week. Mm. Oh, nice. We need to get to Westland. We're supposed to be up there next week. We'll see. Um, couldn't find Well, there you go. Um, so now we've got Trails and oh, I Apple, drink it. the Apple Brandy finish. Oh, it's good too. <laughs> so this is, the, this is the bottle we are giving away tonight and and we're giving away but it was uh, very mm. kindly donated to us by uh Hood Rivers distillery and um so yeah get your uh your uh, uh super chats in there and be part of that and have a chance to win it man there's a really lovely cinnamon note on this that first sip was like a wonderful like fruity cinnamon one thing that we're going to be i i spent the uh, back end week Back of the back end of last week, working on was putting together a number of single barrel picks for the Trails End eight year apple finish. So um, at some point, most likely midsummer, you're gonna hopefully start seeing those appearing on the shelves. And one thing I can tell you for certain is the variation that we're getting in single barrel Trails End apple picks uh, is phenomenal. Uh, you're seeing. Caitlin has a great way of explaining uh, why a single barrel works based off of the image of a spider graph. Oh, do you want me to, do you want me to do my spider graph speech? Yes. Oh, it, it's swiftly I mean, becoming one of my my favorites. Oh yeah, on. no, it's when you do a speech really well, I'll always kick it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just to familiarize all of you what a spider graph is, if you can imagine a spider web and each one of the long pieces that connects it to whatever the spider web is on is an individual flavor or aroma around the outside. Um, and then as you're tasting a whiskey and you're saying, oh, there's a little bit, I'm going to use my nose as the center. So like, oh, there's a, this much clove and there's, but there's not that much clove. So you'd put a dot right here and then you'd go down and you'd be like, okay, well, it's like a little bit more vanilla and like this one's a little bit, there's like some cherry notes. And so you do all of your little dots all the way around all the spiles, all the way to the center. And then you'd have a picture of this is what trails and tastes like as you connect the dots. And that makes your, your spider's web spider graph. So the important thing about, and this is for all single barrel selections, all special finishes, what you're doing is, is there's all of these flavors and aromas that are already in whatever you're drinking, but finishing the trails in, in the apple cask, the apple cask has all these like really nice light uh, fruity apple notes. And so it's going to pull that spider graph off to one side and it's going to highlight stuff that already existed in the, in the, in the bourbon, but now like is extra easy to find like the cinnamon. There was already going to be some baking spices in that bourbon, but now all of a sudden you've added those acetaldehyde notes from the apple, from the apple brandy. And then that's pulling everything over in that category. It's like you smell and taste a little bit of apple that makes it easier to pull out things like brown sugar and cinnamon and nutmeg and clove because those things are, we're used to going with that apple flavor. Same thing. When you do the McCarthy's finish, it's going to pull it in a different direction. So even though it's the same bourbon going into both of those casks that all started out like this, you're going to end up with these really great creative kind of wonky spider graphs that make them special. Love it. This is cinnamon tastic. <laughs> I, and I don't say this. I, 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 I'm pretty forthcoming with what I like and what I don't like. I'm usually, like yeah. My face usually tells the story before I actually speak. <laughs> I very much enjoyed this. Like yeah. there's a, a an amazing vanilla note in here that apple comes through. The cinnamon was like the first I yeah. just I'm just I'm happy. That's that's the funny thing about this yeah. this brand and this product in particular, but this brand neither one of us is very big on finished whiskeys. It's not usually mm -hmm. something that appeals to us, but these are standouts and for whatever reason and you know, apple brandy as a finished smoked peated american mm -hmm. single malt barrels as a finish that sort of thing sort of is pushing the envelope of this yeah. going beyond some of the other items that we've um you know that, that we're used to seeing on finishing yeah. um 
Good question here. First off, I want to say thank you, Chad Wallace. Thanks, Chad. Cheers. You're, and welcome. You're not you're not that late. You're, you're, you're never late. You're not on late. You're you're yeah. always on time when you're on the bourbon van. <laughs> Worth yeah. <laughs> Good question. For those of you that don't know, Batanga tequila is a Hood River Distillery product. Um, Peach Coke would like to know: Do you get any of the used tequila barrels for future trails and or McCarthy's aging options? Good question. If we get our say, that is going to happen. That is something that we have yelled and screamed about. Um, it, it hasn't happened yet. I, I'll, uh, I I think both of us are going to keep on beating that drum as long as we can because we want those barrels too. Fantastic. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's easier to ship uh, Batango already bottled up here, so doesn't come um, in barrels. Just want to shout out here, Keith J. Uh, who's on his second day of his hangover had about a half a bottle of 156 proof Octavian oh on Saturday. Oh no, that yeah, um, no wonder. I mean, I just want to say I hope you feel better and congratulations on still being alive. Yeah. And text yeah. somebody, yeah, get good, some good electrolytes. Good. That's that's some good Massachusetts stuff. I am really proud of you. I am yeah. a proud mass. Yeah, there's uh -huh. a word for us. It's uh -huh. our word. I'm. It, we uh -huh. invented it. It's our uh -huh. word for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're one of the best of them, buddy. Thank you, Keith. <laughs> Yeah. Well, this is. I think I've only had a sample of the Octavium, right? Yeah, somebody sent us a sample. It was intense, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it was big flavor. It was big, big everything. Flavor. Big everything. everything. Yeah. Big proof. Big flavor. Super dangerous. Yeah, sugar kitty. You're right. Yeah. Hashtag stay vertical. There yeah. You go. <laughs> I love it. So, what are you feeling? Are you liking it? I yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, the, well, in Considering we were just drinking the apple right. brandy yeah. before this, um, it is a it is a nice transition as well to go from apple brandy to bourbon to yeah. that same bourbon finished in apple brandy I casks. Um, that kind of, that that sort of trip that we're on is awfully nice today. Are we doing the Oregon Trail right now? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, I can't I believe Joseph talking. that you haven't trained Bean to stare down the camera like oh, it just. I I know. Just, Introduce, of course. Yeah, who's this? Yeah, Bean. We got it. It's the bourbon man. There has to be a kitty at some There's point. Got to be a cat yeah. on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Bean. Uh, I found. I found Bean in a in a. He, he was abandoned by his mom, and he was the only one of the litter that was still going. And so he's he's been living with me ever since. Nice. Aww. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Those cats, be they love to be part of the show. They want yeah. to be part of it. Yeah. It, it's not a cat if it doesn't want to show you its butt. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. That's hilarious. 100% accurate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, that that brings us to our the, the last product that I want to talk about today. Which gonna, is, Phil's about to get giddy. Let's this, uh let's uh I've been giddy all day. Just waiting That's for true. this moment. That's this true. is the moment right here. Yeah. Um, so McCarthy's Oregon single malt distilled from fermented mash of peat malted Scottish barley, barrel aged a minimum of three years. This particular bottle, it is a single barrel um, that is fermented um, by Double Mountain, the brewery in Hood River, one of many breweries in Hood yeah. River, actually. Uh, for They ferment the imported peat malted Scottish barley, especially for Clear Creek Distillery. One thing that you mentioned that didn't make it in the video, you mentioned that Oregon is potentially a place for, or one of a few terroirs across the globe for, for peat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, we'd yeah. never heard it. We'd never heard that before. Yeah. So Oregon's really cool place. Um, yeah. Oregon Agreed. has like seven, I think it's, there's eight different kinds of like land that you could have. Um, and Oregon has seven of them. I think the only thing that we're missing is uh, tundra, but there is rainforest and there is like little tiny bits of things that you could even classify technically as tropical. And we've got the ocean and, and we've got mountains and we've got desert. We've got it all. And so because we're in such a handy place, there is actually pea bogs in Oregon. Um, and we grow lots of barley as well. So the potential exists. This is that's that's fascinating to me because it seems like a, a real missed opportunity if we're not taking advantage of such a thing. Uh, there's been talks that, that we've been having I mean, with a, a local a local malting house of doing a fully northwest produced 
in every fashion version of McCarthy's. Um, it's more of an issue of when we can find time to Bean is biting the corner of my computer. Uh, <laughs> when, when we can, uh, when we can find time to get that done. Uh, but yes, it's not, I, I love the idea because that was originally Steve's dream was to make McCarthy's just a Northwest expression of, of what uh, Pete at Singham could be. Unfortunately, in 1996, there were no malting houses in the U.S. that were going to produce any amount of peated barley. They thought he was absolutely crazy for even asking. And uh yeah. Uh, that's that's no longer uh, an, an a, a unfortunate reality. There's some people who are really willing to work willing to work with us immediately. It's more about finding time in our schedule in order to get that done. Yeah. That is really really cool. We'd love to. The McCarthy's like, will you know, always process. will always be made with the the malt that we import from Scotland as is the the regular base McCarthy's because if we were to change that it wouldn't taste like McCarthy's. But that isn't to say that there wouldn't be a McCarthy's brand extension. That's the hundred percent Pacific Northwest. And actually doubling on that, on that question is a good one here from peach Coke. He wants to know, did the malting change from Widmer, 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 I always Widmer. say it wrong to double mountain. Did that malting change have any noticeable effect? <clears throat> so they're not malting the barley for us. It's actually peat malted in Scotland. So it comes already heat malted and dried. So it's already been smoked and dried in Scotland and it comes to the U S in 55 pound bags. So, um, and then moving from Woodmer to double mountain, um, the, the, what's changed is the brewery and it's the, the size and the scale. Um, I think from my perspective, I would be interested in what Joseph has to say. From my perspective, I feel like the, it, it's a little bit more fuller in flavor. So the the systems at Widmer are meant to be, they're scaled to be highly efficient. Um, and so they're using like a six roller system on the malt. And so they're crushing that size down to a lot smaller uh, because they're craft, but not, right? Um, versus Double Mountain, which is 100% craft beer. They're using a, a two roller, um, uh, grinder instead. And so the pieces of the malt are actually a little bit bigger. And so we're losing the tiniest amount in efficiency as far as the conversion of the starches. But what we're adding is there's there's more body and there's a more richness and fullness of flavor because of that change. So I have been really actually loving the change. And it happened, I mean, we've been all double mountain going into the barrel room for four four and a half years now um so we've been doing it for quite some time and and um they're an excellent partner to work with we couldn't we can't say enough uh about double mountain and about matt swihart and what he does for us what he does for the community what he does for the larger brewing community as well um so uh the 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 change has been really great i think for everybody all the way around i'm gonna absolutely back up everything Caitlin said, I, I, yeah, the, the approach that they have is, and, and I loved working with Winmere. Don't, don't get me wrong. Oh, no, absolutely. It, it, there was, they did, they did an amazing job, but mm -hmm. every change you start to look for the differences and the new things become less, these novel aspects of it become exciting. So the change itself only made the partnership bigger and better and more interesting. And I love being able to to go down to Double Mountain and, and to talk to Matt all the time. Like Caitlin said, he's an amazingly cool dude. Uh, really, really wonderful guy. And the way that they make it is in very small quantities at a time. The most interesting thing about the history of the McCarthy's and its brewer partnerships is actually the mill. Uh, because the original Windmere mill that was used to make uh, to, to, to crush the barley for Windmere was purchased by Double Mountain and is once again now once again being used to make McCarthy's. And so it's it's been in two different breweries and made the same single malt whiskey. That's cool. It's uh, also kind of fun when you get together, um, you get a bunch of, uh, you know, people that have been in Oregon craft brewing or just craft brewing together, um, you know, it's such a small community that you're almost certainly going to find somebody that had cut their teeth at Widmer at one point in time. And then if you mention that you work for Clear Creek and you make McCarthy's, they give you this look because they've had to, 
they've had to clean the system after they've made it because if you don't clean every teeny tiny nook and cranny incredibly well, then every time if they were to make their you know classic hef after they made the McCarthy's, then all of a sudden it's a peat smoked hefeweizen, but not just a little bit. It's like tens of thousands of gallons of peat smoked hefeweizen, which to me sounds pretty okay, but that's not what people expect when they crack open a bottle of Woodmere hefeweizen. So yeah, uh, yeah we get a, get a steely gaze from people that have had to um, go through the process of cleaning out a brew system after having brewed the McCarthy's. And I think, uh, it, I, th I personally think it's a very valuable experience, but I'm not sure that they would look back on it and say the same. I will say this, that there's, it, you can always count on Double Mountain making a really rich, dark tasting uh, stout immediately after you're making McCarthy's. They run it. That's the first thing they run and they use it to clean out the system because they, they know that like as much as they scrub it and clean it, they still need to run something that's going to cover up whatever trace amounts of phenol are left. It's just smart. A uh, quick question here from LCS Jr. Do you move barrels from one location slash climate within Oregon? My understanding is that you've got your barrel room and that's that's specifically where you keep things, right? Yeah, that's that's correct. Although I, I, I would love um, there's been talk. I, it's always been playful talk, but I love the idea of sending a barrel regional regional barrel aging picks where we can just send it to some Rick House in the in, in the four corners of the state and uh release those like re release a specific blend that was aged in Astoria and one that was aged in, um, you know, Elvrod desert or something like that, you know, and, and see how it affects things. It, it's going to have more to do with the wood, but the romance of it is something that I'm totally willing to just uh, spread my BS wings and fly. If it makes it, <laughs> if it makes it fly, sell any better. Cause that, that just sounds so great. But you have like very swingy climates here in I mean, Oregon, right? I mean, yeah, completely different everywhere you go. I yeah. mean, literally from Just... desert to coast to the rainiest places around. And, <laughs> and like Caitlin mentioned earlier, like the yeah. old rainforest areas and everything. It's all still here. Um, it's just crazy that there's that there's so many climates here to take advantage of. It would be really yeah. interesting to to see how that uh, how that would affect things. I mean, um, if I was given the opportunity for like dream place in Oregon to age a barrel of McCarthy's, I'm going to say Oregon Vortex because that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, the Oregon Vortex is this crazy place where things roll uphill. And Your physics, physics, that somebody forgot to finish uh, programming the Oregon physics generator in the Oregon, <laughs> in, in the real life Oregon trail game. Yeah. Julie and I have a photo there where Julie stands about a foot taller than I do somehow. Yeah, and a really nerdy uh, stop over on our way down to California. I had lamented the fact that we always just drive and we never stop and see anything on the way. And so <laughs> Phil had this wonderful surprise to go to the Oregon Vortex. And I was pumped. And I'll say, like, I, I, we, like of course, you play along or whatever and you get in the car. You're like, sure. it, that, that was weird. I mean, <laughs> I like the idea of aging a barrel, though. I'm into that. But I mean, really, okay, really so. Creepy. Is it better or worse than the Enchanted Forest? That's I was just going to say that the Enchanted forest. forest is my number one pick of where to age that. I absolutely <laughs> wanted to it age. It needs to be it. like in that weird like tree witch's mouth though. Like yeah. you gotta like get it in there. It is my, say, we, we need barrels aged at the Vortex yeah. and at the Enchanted Forest. We need those. I was going to say for those who don't know what the Enchan Enchanted Forest is, my best comparison would be in the Midwest. What is that like? Uh, um... The turkey, like in the, you know, like uh, shoot. What, what the, the medieval times? Medieval times there would be like the, yeah, yeah, medieval times would be like the best comparison. Thank you. I actually Thank can't you. believe that uh, you would hate this. That the Instagram, your you would hate it, didn't pull uh, Enchanted Forest or the Oregon Vortex when he was <laughs> doing our our fake like pitch interview because those yeah, are some like top thing, tier yeah. Oregon bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was great. That was one of the that was one of the best Instagram story series I'd ever seen. Yeah, um, he's one of the nicest that. guys you've ever met. That was so much fun to to do that with him. Yeah, the, you, my you face was literally it. sore the next morning from smiling and laughing when we were recording yeah. it. It was oh, it was phenomenal. 
I will say, currently posting a lot of cool photos from Japan. So if you're not following, you would hate it on Instagram. Yeah, you should be. It's a good time. I I just wanted to go back to the Oregon Vortex because I don't remember who it was, but we met somebody here that said they went to the Oregon Vortex and the the Jeff White from the White Stripes was there at the same time. So (laughs) that adds a little, you know. That's a big deal. To the, That's yeah. a big deal when you're talking <laughs> about like Oregon claims to fame. <laughs> uh, just a, a quick note here from Bill Becker. Thank you for doing the research on this. McCarthy single malt can be found at some big red at Vine and Table and at Cons. That sounds Star Trekky. <laughs> <laughs> only, only if you yell it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there you go. Thank you, Bill, for doing that research. Uh, Tyler, deputy, you are in. Cheers. From Virginia, bourbon hey, band cheers. followers stretch coast to coast, just like the bourbon band does. Yeah. Thanks to the four of you for taking the time to be on the live stream this evening. Thank you, Tyler, and and completely agree. We are um, we're we're approaching the end of our happy hour here. I'm drinking McCarthy's. Would you like to try some of this McCarthy's for the people on camera? I would love to. Here oh, <laughs> I don't want to get my own. Um, this is no, well. We're, well, we're I offered the... you a glass earlier, and you're like, let's just share. Well, uh, and we are at the end of the bottle because. Phil is like obsessed. So I wouldn't say obsessed. I would say <laughs> maybe moderately obsessed. Um, so this is a single barrel selected by Trailhead Liquor and Ben South Liquor here in uh, Bend, Oregon. 113 proof. Um, bottled December 1st, 2021. Great date in history. Mm. And um, yeah, 113 proof American single malt. And it happens to be uh, peated. And it's absolutely the sh- most probably shocking flavor or the most the thing that's shocked me the most that mm-hmm. I liked in a really long time, this, this is absolutely amazing. Um, it's one of those things that every time I see it in the future, I'll be seeking it out. Yeah. Um, just, and then in person, it's just absolutely a fantastic pick. Um, so there are still some of these around. I've seen them recently. So if you're in the central Oregon, um, seek them out. Or if you see these somewhere and you're interested in that flavor profile of mm-hmm. peated, absolute deliciousness, Check I got a out. lot of green olive on this one. What do you say, Joe and Caitlin? Are we are you green how, olive? How am I doing? I, no, I, you're doing great. I, I mean, think, I, I think I gave you my confidence speech when you were here. If yeah. you that's, that's what you taste, that's what you taste. It yeah. doesn't matter what we think. My yeah. brother-in-law's like, are you making stuff up every time you drink something? And I was like, no, I literally taste this. He's like, uh-huh, I'm not tasting any of that. I, I think green olive is a, is a really good one because it kind of describes that little bit of vegetable quality plus the brininess that people brininess. usually come across. Yeah. And, and I think that they both work really well for McCarthy's in, in terms of that flavor. So, yeah, go for it. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, favorite. when Joseph and I do our notes, like we'll we'll say stuff like that, and then it's like you almost have to pull up a sheet of like standard tasting note vocabulary, and yeah. then that we would we would change something like the green olive into you know briny earthiness, right? Because everybody's used to seeing that on a label, but if you just said I don't know, it tastes like green olive and fresh cigarettes and. Uh, <laughs> like shop class and would be like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I have no yeah. idea what this whiskey tastes like, but yeah. if you have like, you know, it tastes like toasted, toasted Oak and uh, vanilla bean burnt uh, orange peel and uh, you know, briny sweet malt, then you'd be like, yeah, all right. Yeah. I, I, I have an idea what that's going to taste like. So everybody tastes and smells things and, and you, you have the vocabulary from things that you've experienced and then over time, you can kind of match it up with this like set list of words that we use to describe everything. Yeah. And there's kind of uh, eventually the only thing that really matters is, is it good whiskey? If right. it's good whiskey, that's all, all you need. And that's really, I mean, we're like, you either like it or you don't. I mean, not if you either like it or you don't, because there are some things that you grow to love. But, you know, there are, you know, usually you take a sip and you're like all in or... Yeah, no. the um, flavor profiles, for, at least for me, like they swing drastically from what I like to what I like. So, well, one of the th- one of the flavors in this glass that, uh, well, in McCarthy's in general, that we talked about in our tasting, that I, I kept saying, "There's something here. I don't. It's fruity. I can't identify it." And Joe suggested bitter, somewhat bitter, grapefruit rind. Mm-hmm. And it had never occurred to me before yeah. because you never think about those flavors when you're drinking no. whiskey, but it absolutely hits that way. And it, it's totally what it is. And uh, that that's why it's good to drink with other people and talk about your experience because you never, you know, sometimes things come up and you go, 
I was tasting that. And sometimes it's just the power of suggestion, I guess. Yeah. But in this instance, uh, it really, um, it hit that way. Do you want to try it and look for grapefruit, Ryan? Well, I'm going to give you a little peek, another peek behind the curtains on tonight, tonight, the peek behind the curtains night. Um, the reason that Joseph was able to call that to hand so quickly is because he loves to torture me by <laughs> just taking, he takes whole huge bites out of grapefruit, Ryan, out of the Ryan to open them like a monster. And, you know, normally, you know, you use your knife, use your nail, maybe a, a petite little like nibble on it to open it up no he will take a full on like it's an apple bite <laughs> and rip a huge chunk of the peel off and you're like okay that's weird maybe he'll stop there he'll spit it out like a normal human being and then continue to peel it no 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 because he knows that it irritates me he will, <laughs> he will, he will pull the whole peel into his mouth and he will chew it while he dead eyes me yep yep yeah <laughs> I look into your soul and I watch, yeah. I, I like, I like to see, <laughs> and you're I like, like to see a curl into itself. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, did, he probably did this once, maybe twice. No, he did it. He did it once last week. Last week is this, this is the most recent that this has happened. So yeah, Joseph <laughs> of all people is very well acquainted with the taste of grapefruit rice. So you guys have a nice synergy, right? Like you guys have been together for a long time. You know yeah. exactly what that is. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Kate, and no Kate matter and what, I, I, there's always a look of absolute horror on my face. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, real yeah, quick, we, we want to give a shout out to Northwest Bourbon, um, who did his top five whiskeys from Washington yes. State. Uh, so if you've been following our series, we did the top five from Oregon, of which a couple here on the table were on that list northwest bourbon just did one for washington state which we're check it out stoked about it's great and uh, a couple things on there we definitely haven't tried and yeah. whiskey row is in the house they also did theirs for virginia so cheers, cheers to you uh david and jamie thanks so much for stopping by and uh th then I, I really like this idea um from i gotta find it now here it is peach coke says put some barrels on a barge on the columbia and it'll be like jefferson's ocean <laughs> I, 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 I saw that and i immediately wanted to figure out a way to make that happen i love that idea i i have no idea how that's going to happen but boy do i want that to be a thing <laughs> yeah i don't relish the idea of how those meetings of tidewater would go not well not well at all. Uh, you know, I, I feel like we could spoil one more surprise that's coming up because it was it was already spoiled on, on coming whiskey uh, yesterday. As a matter of fact, we're going to be releasing a McCarthy six year that's PX finished. Um, and so that should be coming out this fall. We got we just are finalizing the label right now. It's so for those awesome. of you that don't know all the lingo, that's a Pedro Jimenez sherry cask that we finished the six year uh, whiskey in. In case you didn't know what just PX is off the cuff. <laughs> Not every, hey, we, we we've been in the game a long time. We still forget stuff all the time. So yeah, yeah. No. well, all I can say is that this is this has been the second we tried it. I think Caitlin and I uh, got giddy, and then I, I mean, you have to think about with a combined thirty years of making McCarthy's, how much McCarthy's that she and I have made over the year, and. For us to say that this is probably the best version of it we've ever done is exactly what I mean. That that was what we said at the time. I got goosebumps. I still think it's just beyond uh, exciting, and so we're going to start to try to keep that uh, that dream going of doing even more uh, finishes. Um, so I'm I'm really excited for that to come out. So start looking for it uh, sometime in. Uh, OND, which is more industry legal for uh, October, November, December. Well, and we can confirm, right, that we tried it. And, yeah, confirm away. And Julie, uh, Julie, not being a big peated whiskey fan, um, admitted that it was probably her one. Of, well, I think you said it was your top two favorite things yeah. that you tried today. We tried a lot of things. So yeah. um, absolutely <laughs> delicious. Looking forward to that yeah, one. That's a bottle sure. that will definitely be on the shelf here. When we have shelves again. When we <laughs> right in a couple yeah. of months. <laughs> this is an exceedingly blue room. It just doesn't feel right. I know. I feel like we're standing in front of a green. It does screen. look blue. It's very blue. It's very blue. And with this party photo. <laughs> um. All right. Well, we've we've had now. Got a, a good. Uh, we've had good old selection. old delicious double bourbon barreled apple brandy at eighty five mm -hmm. proof. Um, we're, we've never been big brandy people, but that's very good. Mm -hmm. We've got 
Trails End, 10 that we had tonight. The eight, by the way, we keep saying is one of the better $40 or under yeah. bottles out there. Fantastic value for eight dollars, 80 for 90 proof, right? Eight years aged, and it's absolutely fantastic. And this is the 10 year, 105 proof, uh, absolutely stellar bottle. Our Oregon bourbon of the year for 2021. And we're still proud to say that we love that bottle. Yeah. Uh, the Apple Brandy finished version of Trails End is just out like. I think it was less than two weeks ago. Less yeah, less. it shipped it's, to it's, Oregon last Friday. Oh, so Not this Friday. Did, it left, it yeah. left. No, no, it didn't even. That I, I talked to. Uh, I talked to Jordan. It actually shipped out on Tuesday. So it did hasn't it really? Even, it hasn't even been a week. It it left the plant on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So that and that's a that's a fifty dollar bottle here in Oregon. Yeah, it is eight years aged and then goes into the apple brandy casks, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's 105 proof. Absolutely fantastic. That's the bottle we're giving away tonight for your Super Chats. So this is the last chance. Get them in if you're thinking about joining us for that. And finally, the McCarthy's single malt here, this uh, peated uh, Scottish barley. I, I can't say enough about this. I keep talking yeah. about it nonstop. I'm going to stop talking about it, at least for tonight. I'll probably come back and start talking about it again. <laughs> but love love the McCarthy's uh, bottles. And again, for our Patreons, you will be in the next couple of days, maybe Friday ish. Uh, we'll be posting that. Uh, we call it the uncut unfiltered, oh. uh, uncut unfiltered tasting. So you'll get that uh, from us uh, with the crew. The, uh, it was uh, Joseph, Caitlin and Garrett and Julie and I tasting through the entire product line, including some experimental stuff, including all these finished items and unusual items. So that is coming to our Patreon group. And um, excited to share that with you. And now it's time for us to choose uh, the winner yeah. of tonight's Trails End. Again, it's going to be Trails End um, Apple Brandy Finished uh, Eight Year Whiskey. And Julie's going to uh, randomize the uh, the folks there. And I good at it. You are getting good at it. And I'm going to go ahead and tell Siri to give me a number between one and what. And oh, by the sorry. way, I see people are asking, what is this photo behind us? Close. Julie took this at uh, New Year's Eve at the Aragon several, 10 years ago. Aragon, the, Chicago. The Aragon Ballroom in Chicago. And the it was, Black uh, Keys. There you go. Black Keys on New Year's Eve. And it was 2000 and... 10? 10? Sounds right. It still looks pretty good. I don't know. Yeah. We just we just found an old playlist out of the Black Keys on. I forgot all about them. <laughs> 119. 119 <laughs> folks. So I need a number between 1 and 119. The answer is 31. The answer is wow, 31. Never go that high. Ruby Heart 921. Baby, it's coming to you. Ruby Heart 921. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Every, come on, 69. <laughs> Wendy, come on. That was the last I know. one. That was last that time. Was that last was a time. funny, uh, that was hilarious. That actually. was Siri just misbehaving. Ruby. Thank, yeah. Congratulations, Ruby. You are getting a bottle of Trails and eight at 105 proof finished mm -hmm. in apple brandy. It's delicious. Cash. Absolutely. And uh, 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 I was going to say, uh, DM us on when you get it and how you like it. Yeah. We want to hear all about it. Yeah. Uh, but we have to thank joe and caitlin so much and garrett and Even garrett, garrett. Oh, and yeah. garrett. Um, thank you so much for being here is there anything else that you're eager to share you just have to get something off your chest yeah anything you want to talk about at all i i just have to say that i i can't appreciate garrett and caitlin enough yeah. they are the best uh employees i've ever had um the best distillers i've ever worked with and they make um all of the they make it not they make me not have to worry when I leave uh, to do silly things that aren't as productive as running a distillery. And also, uh, Ruby, uh, send me a message uh, at the Trails End Instagram account. I'll, I'll see if we can dig up uh, some swag from you from the swag mountain that we have tucked away. So we we'll we'll see if we can get you something to go along with that bottle. Wow, thank you and so then, much. Girl. I mean, huge thanks to the Bourbon Van as well. We had an absolute great time when you guys were here. Um, you're, you're always welcome. You're, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're part of the Clear Creek family at this point in time. So come by any time that you're in Hood River. Um, we had a blast. And then thank you again for, for having us tonight. Yeah, our pleasure. And likewise, when you're in bed. 
Absolutely. Anytime you're out here, our house is your house. Yeah. Always welcome. And maybe next time it'll have a bathroom. But yeah. Right now it doesn't have any room, but <laughs> it's a real strange place to live. I'll be honest. Yeah. And we said this in the video. I think we might have covered it as well. Not strangers, but like basically strangers, right? When we showed up, like we yeah, have emails sure. and stuff. Literally, it felt like we knew each other. 20 years like that's yeah. how just wonderful and accommodating you guys were how welcoming how just I, we just had just the most Seriously. amazing time i mean we talked about this like i was like are we just gonna, like an hour two hours and then it was a whole day it was like we just had so much fun and we just couldn't be more thankful for inviting us out there and letting us you know take over your whole day basically. Right. Exactly. 100%. it was a yeah. great day yeah, yeah. come back <laughs> well, I'll, yeah, we have to come. We're passing through Hood River again in less than a month. Two weeks. Well, yeah, two way weeks. less than a month. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll certainly be in touch. And Actually, we'll, two we'll, weeks. Yeah. Let me do some math real quick. <laughs> yeah, we'll be distilling. Uh, we'll be distilling McCarthy's. So if you want to oh. uh, taste McCarthy's straight off the still, uh, make sure you stop. Uh, stop in. Yeah, that there's, doesn't sound like a bad there, idea at all. Yeah. There's no, there's no way to spoil McCarthy's like tasting it straight off the still. Oh, it, you big baby, it's not that bad. <laughs> it needs well, we, time. I mean, our sure, understanding based on your but... single to mile post is that the best way to spoil McCarthy's is to try and put it in a margarita. Actually, you yeah. know what? Here's the thing. Um, it actually doesn't make it that half bad. I mean, mezcal is a thing. If you if yeah. you go light on the McCarthy's, it's actually not half bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the 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 actually the, the the McCarthy's margarita was pretty good. I I, I played that up. I I had pre filled my mouth with way more liquid than it looked like I'd sp I I took, so I just erupted with as much as I possibly could. Um, one last one last question for you before we go. And this is another Peach Coke exclusive. Uh, big question. This is a big deal. Big question. Will there ever be another McCarthy's older than the six year? We're very curious. So, okay. So, um, for those of you that love space and space exploration, there may or may not be a Voyager probe barrel of McCarthy's somewhere within the cosmos um, that will tell us what McCarthy's could taste like uh, at like. 11 years now um if joseph and i have our druthers 100 percent, there's 100 percent definitely going to be one that's older than six year um but we have to stop selling out all of the three and six year before that happens so. i mean it only took us uh what 25 years to release a six anything older than three years so so <laughs> hopefully it'll be a lot quicker since then and, and it's really honestly it's 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 so much of a thank you to you all for being supporters of clear creek and supporters of caitlin's mine and before us uh steve mccarthy so uh, i really if there's one thing i have to say is thank you so much because we don't have a job without your support and mm -hmm. um I, I just I, I'm so humbled when people get what we do and see it as interesting. It, it makes me very, very proud to represent this craft. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Joe O'Sullivan. Thank you, Caitlin Bartleby. Thank you also, of course, to Garrett for being so welcome when, when we were there. Thank you to all of you who came out for the premiere today. We're extremely proud of that video. Yeah. Um, First time we've ever done anything like that, and and it means the world to us that so many people came out. So give it a like if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And uh, what else? Well, just thanks for your patience over the last month. We really yeah. appreciate it. This is just an amazing community. Um, Patreon, non Patreon, right? There's just the whole whiskey tube community. Just a wonderful Absolutely. place to be, and we are so appreciative. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Had a great time. And from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everyone.